Hello everyone. Welcome to Success Short Saint Passage. Today we are going to discuss question answers of natural vegetation of India. So let us begin with the first question answer. The first is what are the factors that affect the natural vegetation of a place? There are four important factors which affect the natural vegetation of a place. First, rain, rainfall. Second, relief. Third is soil and fourth is temperature. So these are the four factors that affect the natural vegetation of a place. And how do they affect? I have already explained in my last video. The link of that video is given in the description box. You may watch that. Second question is, state the relation between climate and the natural vegetation of a place. The climate and the natural vegetation of a place are very closely related to each other. For example, the northeastern part of India. Here, the average temperature is 25 degrees centigrade to 28 degrees centigrade. And the rainfall is very high. Same condition exists in these regions. Western slopes of the western Ghats. Here also, the same conditions. That is, heavy rainfall and average temperature. So, these regions where there is heavy rainfall, there exist evergreen forest. So evergreen forests are found in regions where the temperature is average and the rainfall is heavy. On the contrary to this, we will see that the northwestern part of Rajasthan, this region has desert vegetation. Why is this desert vegetation? It is because of high temperature and low rainfall. Or we can see the temperature is so high and the rainfall is, this is the reason that the rainfall is less in these regions. As such, the vegetation found here are desert scrub forest. These forests consist of cacti, acacia and babul trees. Means they have a characteristic to withstand dry conditions. That is why they are called as desert vegetation which can exist in dry conditions. So they are called as desert vegetation and they are adapted to desert climatic conditions. Next question is why deciduous monsoon forests are found on the eastern part of India? You can see here deciduous forests are found in central part of India also and eastern part of India. Now these eastern part of India receive moderate rainfall that is about 150-100 cm to 200 cm. Now, because of this average rainfall, here deciduous forests exist. Question number four is, why is exploitation of evergreen forest difficult? Now, we can see that evergreen forest is found in the western slopes of the western Ghats and they are occupying a large area in northeastern part of India. Now the reason, there are three reasons behind this why exploitation of evergreen forest is not possible. First reason is they are so mixed and dense forest that penetration into such forest is difficult. Second reason is that these forests, in these forests, the tangled undergrowth which consists of creepers, climbers and grasses, they are so dense and tangled. So due to this tangled undergrowth, of vegetation, again penetrating into these uh, type of forest is difficult. The third reason is that these regions are not plain areas, they are hilly areas. So here transport facilities are not adequate which can help in exploitation of natural vegetation of these regions. So this is the reason, three reason which makes us, gives us an answer that natural vegetation in these regions are evergreen and penetration in such kind of forest is difficult. And they are dense forest with mixed types of species of trees. So finding out these different species of trees is also difficult and their exploitation is also difficult. Let's come to question number 5. Name the following. Now these are the questions which carry one marks. You have to give just one word answer that is name the following. Another name for the mangrove forest. Another name for the mangrove forest is tidal forest. 
Tidal forests, you can see their location is on the deltaic regions on the eastern coastal of India. Second is economically the most important vegetation. The economically most important vegetation is deciduous forest. Deciduous forest consists of different types of trees but they are not mixed and they are found in pure stands. Pure stands means a particular species of tree is found in large area and they are not scattered. They are found in particular area. So they are found in pure stand and the exploitation of deciduous forest is easy. At the same time, they have valuable timber and the timber is hard, strong and durable. So this is considered to be the most economical forest. Third is the forest present on the western slopes of western Ghat. You can see your evergreen forest. Evergreen forests are found on the western slopes of the western Ghats. Here is the western Ghat and on the western side that is on the western slopes of the western Ghats evergreen forest is found. The most widespread forest that shed their leaves for 6 to 8 weeks during the spring season. Now this is a very important characteristic of the deciduous forest. Deciduous forests have this special characteristic that they shed their leaves for 6 to 8 weeks during the spring season. Before moving to the next question, subscribe the channel to get the notification and stay tuned till the end of the video. Because the last part of the video will be having one more important question that is hip freeze. So let's move to question number 6. What are xerophytic vegetation? Xerophytic vegetation which are found in the desert forest region that is desert forest or we can also say thorny or scrub forest. Xerophytic vegetation comprises of small plants or trees or bushes which have no leaves, they either have no leaves or they have very thin leaves. But they have thick stem which have waxy coat on their surface. Another important characteristic of such vegetation is that they have long roots which penetrate deep down into the earth to absorb moisture. And to reduce the loss of moisture, they develop spines and thorns on the leaves, on the stem you can see. Because they have very thick stem and they have a waxy layer on it and to reduce the loss of moisture they develop spines and horns. So this is about the xerophytic vegetation. Next is what is the difference between evergreen forest and deciduous forest? Deciduous forest, the most important difference between deciduous forest and evergreen forest is that Deciduous forest, they shed their leaves for 6 to 8 weeks during the spring season. That is in the month of March and April. And evergreen forest, from the name itself we can make it out. They are evergreen means they do not shed their leaves in any part of the year. And this is the reason that they are called as evergreen forest. The next difference is that deciduous forest receive comparatively less rain. Evergreen forests are present in areas which receive very heavy rainfall that is above 200 cm of rainfall and you can see another region where evergreen forest exists that is western slopes of the western ghats. These regions because here the Bay of Bengal branch hits the western coast first. So these regions receive very heavy rainfall and evergreen forests are present in these regions. These are the two difference, two most important difference between deciduous forest and evergreen forest. You can also give other difference like naming the important types of trees which are found here in deciduous forest. They are economically very important and they have valuable timber and the species of trees which are found here are sal, sesame, teak. Here the important species of trees found here are mahogany, ebony and rosewood. There are many other, but these are the three important differences. Next question is, write two ways of conserving forest. Now, conservation of forest has become a very important part in today's life.
the deforestation is taking in taking place in large scale the first we can say the first reason for conservation of or the first way to conserve the forest is afforestation afforestation is what that is planting of saplings over a large area so that is called as afforestation another way we can say is planting of trees along the roadside along the railway lines we can give some more uh, ways to conserve the forest if it is too much question we can write two ways if it is more than that we can write more that is another important uh, way is uh, creating fire line in forest to prevent the spread of fire next question is why are deciduous forest economically important deciduous trees or we can say deciduous forest it contains important valuable timber so they are called as economically important forest now these forest contain valuable timber which are very hard and durable at the same time they are not liable to any kind of rust second important thing about such forest is that the species of trees are found in pure stand pure stand means a particular species of tree is found in a particular area so exploitation of such type of tree or such uh, species of tree is easy because of the easy exploitation this is important type of vegetation and now we come to the last part of the questions that is give reason question number 10 give reason the first give reason is a tidal forest are found in the deltaic areas let us see the deltaic areas these are the four deltaic regions in the eastern coast of india now this is the delta of ganga and brahmaputra this also extends in bangladesh this is the largest growing delta in the world here what is the reason that tidal forest grow in the deltaic region this is the mouth of the river now this is the mouth of the river of ganga and brahmaputra this is the mouth of the river mahanadi this is godavari and krishna and this is the mouth of the river kaveri so basically the tidal forest grow in the mouth of the river mouth of the river are important because they contain a lot of silt the rivers which we know the rivers which flow from the higher regions higher altitudes they deposit a lot of silt in the lower slopes now because of high deposition of silt in these regions the deltaic vegetation develop over there or we can say tidal forest develop another important reason why these forest develop on the banks of these coastal areas because they can withstand saline conditions the water in here that is in bay of bengal the water they are saline now due to these saline condition also they can withstand what is the reason the reason is that the trees of the tidal forest the trees of the tidal forest or the plants of the tidal forest they have thick roots and their roots have a salt filtering system means they do not absorb the salt but they absorb the water and they can withstand in these marshy conditions also they are deltaic area these deltaic area are swampy and marshy areas so they can develop in those conditions also so these were the reason why tidal forests are found in the deltaic region next is increase in shrinkage of forest cover in india this is a major concern in india a major concern that forests are being depleted to a large extent the reason behind is deforestation that is cutting down or felling of trees in large scale the second reason is unscientific method of cultivation we all know jhum cultivation or shifting cultivation or it is also known as slash and burn cultivation this is an unscientific method of cultivation which is being practiced especially in the northeastern part of india and also by the tribal communities in chota nagpur plateau so this reason makes the depletion of forest and it leads to shrinkage of forest cover in india the second is third is 
tropical evergreen forest are called as evergreen forest the most important reason why evergreen tropical evergreen forest are called as evergreen the reason behind evergreen is that they do not shed leaves in any part of the year since they do not shed leaves in any part of the year and also they receive very heavy rainfall during the monsoon season so and the climate is also not very harsh the temperature also never exceeds to maximum that is 40 degree centigrade or maybe more than that the temperature is also average so these regions do not shed they the most important reason is that they do not shed leaves in any part of the year don't forget to mention in any part of the year so they are called as evergreen forest fourth is sundari trees are suitable for boat making sundari tree it has got its name from the sundarban delta that is the delta of ganga and brahmaputra it has got its name from the sundarbans so sundarbans means it contains consists large species of sundari trees they are important because the wood of sundari tree is hard they are very strong and very durable means durable means they exist for a long time so this is the reason that sundari trees are suitable for boat making because boats are most of the time they are under water so this wood is considered to be hard strong and they are durable so boat making is an important aspect of these sundari trees the last is evergreen forest are also called as rain forest why evergreen forest are called as rain forest because these regions receive very heavy rain due to heavy rainfall they are evergreen forest so these evergreen forest are also called as rain forest so i hope the concept is clear if not do watch the video on natural vegetation of india where where i have explained the whole reason behind it and don't forget to subscribe to get the next videos thank you